how to, or how we cope with things um, in our lives. It doesn't matter how you cope with them, it just matters that you do. And it turned into this film experiment of that. So, uh, yeah. He said, how did the hallucinations come into it? Um, I don't know if you've ever taken too many drugs in your life. <laughs> there becomes a point where nothing really is the same and you're not really where you're at, you don't know where you're at. Um, and that's just kind of where the lead character stays, just to be able to deal with her life. And, um, you know, we start thinking about this and that, and someone's talking to us, but we can't hear a word they're saying. And, you know, there's mice, and then they help you with your stuff. You know, whatever, then you come back to life. And that's kind of, and then Nick, I'll say, uh, Nick took that to another level. So. So that wasn't in the original. That was in the script, but not to that level. He came to me with the "fuck you" song, and what, I, I had to even sit there with him for a couple of days and understand what he was talking about. So, uh, yeah. He's not here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ja, warte mal. Schrei einfach. Also ich versuche es einfach mal mit dem Ja, genau. Ja, ja. The news on television from Waco to Snowden. I mean, it seems just uh, Americans are really so fucked up crazy. Oh. Or is it just stereotypical centrism? Yeah. Are you saying America's fucked up? Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> says the whole world is crazy and if you aren't you're not responding properly to what's going on around you <laughs> yeah i got a kind of the feeling that um the lead character hasn't so much development uh, the development lies at the uh, at the viewers because we learn uh, the longer the film takes, and the longer uh, the more we learn how crazy she really is. And but she's the same crazy at the beginning from the film, like at the end. Only that she, maybe she's got one person in this crazy other guy uh, who, who uh, takes her as she is, and <laughs> I don't know why, but he takes her for for. Uh, what was uh, quite normal. Uh, so. Well, Ray Liotta is a nutcase, so maybe that yeah, I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> um, uh, uh, um, wouldn't you say, though, that you walk around and you talk to people and what you're thinking and what you say are two totally different things? That's all. Okay. That's the only way I can explain it to you. Okay. Um, Things don't really wrap up with the bow. That's why we're, you know, that's why we're gonna have a problem putting it in 3,000 theaters, this film. So, independent film, it's kind of the way life is. It just kind of keeps going. You know, you break up with someone, but it just keeps going. Nothing, they don't come back immediately and play and the music starts. You know what I mean? So, I don't know, I think it was just a natural progression. I think if she was, Please, please. You're certainly right that the character does not develop, but you're also right with the analysis that the audience does develop. You start seeing her as a nutcase, as somebody who's merely 
merely sympathetic. And throughout the development of the film, you actually more and more are drawn into her situation and you start caring for her. And at the end of the day, you actually feel kind of happy that she finally meets somebody who can take her the way she is. Because from where she comes and from the background and her family, I, I guess that all of us would be in that case too, coming from that background. So yes, you're right. The audience develops in this case and not the lead character, which is one of the unique and maybe rare things in this movie or in this movie compared to other movies that the audience makes that step forward. Thank you. I can understand. <laughs> Thank you very much. Why did you call the film Yellow? What means? I wish Nick was here. Uh, he hates when I say this because it means nothing. It just means something and nothing. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I, I can't answer that, and I wish I could tell you why, but I, I can't answer that. I'm just Love with the film, and uh, he's from India, and it, it, all you need is one. You know what I mean? There was a lot of notes. There was so years of notes, agent. huh? You had an agent. Did I have an agent? Angel, not agent. Angel. Oh yes, yes, yeah. I was gonna say yes. Thank you. Uh, you know, it showed in Canada, which is kind of like the United States. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and they, they, uh, big film community um, for the audience, kind of like Munich is, um, and they they love the film. It's you know, it's something different. You know, like it or hate it. You know, it's something that you might not have seen before. It's you know, a little bit of eye candy. I don't know. Um, but in America, it's only shown in Seattle, 
and to a very small audience. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, from what I hear, um, it'll, they'll see it at the end of the year. Right now, the film is mostly shown at film festivals, and the festival audience loves the film, loves the movies. But they're much more receptive and much more open to different approaches than, let's say, the business side of this industry, which is much more risk averse and would like to have films which are more likely to be put in a box, which in this case is, I don't think, the case and uh, I was at the premiere in Toronto and the Toronto audience went totally ballistic. I mean, they were clapping and, and, and applauding for about almost half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> now we feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. Yeah, you mean not very family home? Is that what you mean? No, for families, for American families. So in American cinema, it's very intimate because there are many problems which are usually not told to them. I, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'll say this. When I was when we were filming in Oklahoma, I could say four or five people came up to me who were had intimate relationships with family members and thanked me while crying. So I did some research on that, obviously, too. And three in 10 brothers and sisters within three years apart have had some sort of intimate relation that has caused them some sort of emotional distress. And that's just what they know. So it's a big taboo. I think it's a, a big taboo everywhere. So. Um, it actually happens. I actually do know. So I don't know. From a family, that's what I think of. Is that a statistic for Oklahoma or the whole world? Oklahoma is like nine. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's no limits in the town. It's not like you're a visit. That's a great thing. Because I've gone there. <laughs> I haven't yet. I I want to. My friend that produced Yellow also produced that film. So I'm um, very excited. Yeah, right? That's like a, a chick flick coming up, right? I did not know that. Yeah. Like with animals? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. How much how much did you connect with your character? Are there a lot of similarities? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. Did somebody uh, ask? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. She's actually a very kind person. Yeah. I talked a lot. I meant that I don't think the, that this wasn't a kind person that I saw in the movie. I, I, I'm just curious how, how close it was to you. It was a stretch. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, you know, it was a stretch for this period of my life. Um, <laughs> I guess it, it, for, for an actress, it is a challenge to play such a role because uh, very few actresses really could uh, play that role without being a good actress and just being themselves. If, if you are that way, you're hardly to get a job in LA. <laughs> Um, how did 
the casting actually go? So how did Nick and you get to work together or get to meet? We we decided to write this film, <clears throat> um, and that we would leave it on the shelf if nobody wanted to make it. That would be fine with us. And uh, but of course we tried. And Miss Sienna Miller came on first and uh, loved the part. And we started filming with her, which is how we got financing. And uh, that's how that's kind of how it happened. And then we got shut down for nine months. <laughs> One week with Sienna Miller, and then nine months done. It was crazy. And then that's when the most Thing I may like to add to this. Uh, very often you find situations where if the role is very difficult or very unique, very eccentric, uh, you it's much more likely to get bigger actors or actresses to commit to it because they feel a kind of challenge. They're normally casted for big budget movies where they play pretty, how you say, standard roles. And then when you have the chance to, to, to be somebody that you probably never get the chance to play again, it's more likely that they will commit to it, especially when they have a standing, because then they mustn't be afraid that it will ruin their career. But uh, in this case, it was it was really like an indie film, like an independent film. So it was not that there was a big, there was an angel investor behind it, but it didn't mean that uh, it would follow the standard studio rules of casting. No, one one commits to it, talks to the other, says, "Hey, I'm doing a great movie here." There would be a wonderful part for you in it, and so it spreads and basically like a like a campfire goes from one to the next to the next, and suddenly you end up with an incredible cast that you would have never imagined when you start uh, to be able to 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 work with. Thank <laughs> you.